In this bag is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I ordered it as soon as pre-orders went live and it just came. So I thought why not do a very quick unboxing and give you guys my first impressions of the phone. Just a very quick one to say, I'm using my Sony ZV-1 to film this A-roll, but I've got B-roll here. So if you see uh, a very stark difference in quality, I apologize, cameras are very different. First things first, it came in a white box this year, which is quite odd. Normally they come in the black boxes for the pro versions, but this year they came in white boxes. So yeah, don't be alarmed. It's very much a iPhone Pro Max. I actually decided to upgrade this year because I'm on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, it has seen better days, <laughs> if I could say so myself. The speakers are very muffled. I mentioned this in my last video, uh, which you should go check out. Yeah, so very much due for an upgrade. All right, so let's get down to unboxing. Moment of truth. I went for the space black version, as you can tell. Um, a very big fan of black phones. The purple did look cool, but um, not really, not really my vibe. This year, it doesn't come with a charging brick. Um, it obviously comes with the cable and the documentation, but I'm not going to show you that because nobody really cares. This is what you all came here to see, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. If you have the iPhone 13 Pro Max or Pro or any of the iPhone 13 models, you might not want to upgrade your phone um, because there isn't that much of a difference. Obviously this year, one of the main selling features of the phone is the dynamic island. So my iPhone 11 is the space gray model and obviously I've gone for the space black version. There is a bit of a difference between the two phones. I'm not sure if you can see on camera. Um, there's a slight difference. It seems like it's a bit more matte in the 14 than the 11. The Apple logo on the iPhone 14 is a bit bigger than the 11. Obviously the cameras are massive on the on the 14 compared to the 11. One thing I'll definitely need to do is pick up a um, phone case, but I'll probably do like an accessories video once I get everything I want for the phone. There's quite a noticeable difference between the width of the phones. It might just be because it's a bit rounded on the, the 11 Pro uh, compared to the squared off version of the 14 Pro that I'll show you on this camera. It looks and feels like the 14 is a bit thicker. In terms of the size of the phones, there isn't that much difference. It might be like maybe an inch bigger on the 14 Pro compared to the um, 11. But yeah, probably no difference at all if you're coming from a 13 or even the 12. But yeah, moment of truth. Let's turn it on. And here you can see the dynamic island in full effect, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, and I'm actually quite excited to use. I'm also excited to try out the camera system. So this has a 48 megapixel camera, which can only be used in its full capacity if you're shooting on ProRes. If not, it might look similar to the 12 megapixel cameras that you might find in the 13, 12 and 11 uh, in terms of picture quality. If you have got the 14 or you want it and you want to make sure you're utilizing the full dynamic range in the photos and everything, make sure you turn on ProRes. I will be doing that too. Um, and yeah, check me out on Instagram or Twitter. I might be posting a few pictures there so you can get a feel of the quality of the photos. Another feature I'm looking forward to testing is the always on display. Uh, we've seen it come to the Apple Watch. It's also on a bunch of different phones that you use at the Android software. So yeah, excited to see how that comes to fruition. I'm not sure if I will keep on the always on display. I obviously have to see while I was using the phone. Reason for that being is because um, when I put my phone down, I'm like phone down. I don't really want to see any calls or anything like that. So that might be a bit distracting for me. And obviously I have the Apple Watch, so I have some notifications coming through here too. So not sure how useful or helpful it would be to have always on display showing you a bunch of different not notifications all the time. But we'll see what that actually feels like after a few days or weeks of using it. There's also a bunch of other things that come with the phone, like um, the A16 chip. Uh, and for me, better battery life, just meaning Phone will last longer. It will be a lot faster than my 11 Pro Max, which is great. The phone also has the ProMotion displays. And as always, setting up a new iPhone is really, really simple. Just have to hold your phone, your current phone next to it, and it will prompt you to update. All right, so I've had a bit of a play with the phone. I've kind of set it up. Um, and here you can see the dynamic island in full effect. 
So if I now go to timer, see it's start timer. Um, let's just say three minutes or so. You can see it pop up with this. So here you can see the timer and I go there and I have music playing in the background. So if I click on music, it will switch and then show me the timer. So that's the multitasking feature when you're using the dynamic island. But if you go back to home screen, it will split into two. So you have um, the app that you were using there and then you have the other app that we're using there. So yeah, pretty cool feature. And this is an example of the always on display. So here you can see the feature on and off, on and off. Obviously if I want my phone to be off, I want it to be off. So I might actually turn that off, we'll see. Might be useful for you guys who just have your phone down um, and you just wanna quickly see things coming into your phone like text messages or, or Instagram messages or whatever. But yeah, I'm not too sure if I find that too useful. So I'll keep you updated on how my iPhone 14 journey is going, especially coming from an 11 Pro Max. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.